Hello everyone and welcome to another of these Fireside Chats with Cotswold Bees. And today we're going to look at one of the questions we're asked probably more than any other when we're doing talks. And that is, how do the bees decide which of their number is going to be the queen and rule the hive? Well, we could make a very quick video on that, in that they don't and she doesn't. But I think we need to look into it in a bit more detail. Now I happen to know that there's a cup of tea and a bit of ginger cake waiting for me, so I'm just going to go and grab that and we'll talk about how the bees actually make a new queen. Okay then, let's discuss one of the marvels of nature, and I don't just mean this ginger cake, although it is pretty good. How do the bees actually create a new queen? Well first we need to look at why do the bees want to create a new queen. And like all animals, a queen bee has a limited life. When I first started beekeeping that would be somewhere between three, four, maybe as much as five years. Now with the warmer winters and the fact that she's laying longer, we're seeing queens live as little as two years. Three years is certainly as good as we're going to get in most cases in, in the UK these days. So when the queen comes to the end of her life, there's no retirement home for old queens, the bees will kill her and make a new one. The other time that they'll need a new queen is if they're going to swarm. And a swarm is where the old queen goes off with roughly half the bees to form a new colony, leaving behind a new young queen to continue with the existing colony. So we've got two circumstances under which the bees will need a new queen. First, if the old queen is getting towards the end of her life, when they'll actually kill her and then replace her, and secondly, if they're going to swarm. Well, the physical means by which they do it has been understood for quite a long time, but actually the genetics and the actual chemistry behind it all has only recently been discovered, and it's really incredible. When the bees want a new queen, they can take any fertilised egg, in other words, a female egg, or indeed they can take a young larva and they can make a queen out of it. And the way they do this is to put it into a special cell and feed it in a special way. We know our bees are starting to make new queens when we see them making cells that actually point down. So a normal cell, the normal hexagon cell in a colony, will look like this and we'll see the eggs inside it. If they're actually preparing to make a new queen, however, those cells won't be hexagon, they'll be more peanut shaped when they eventually get finished and they'll be pointing down, they'll be vertical. And that's the really big difference. Queen cells hang vertically from the comb and normal cells are hexagons at a horizontal level. First thing they've got to do to make a new queen is take the egg or indeed a young larva and put it into one of these queen cells. And you see here where they've got a young larva which is developing in a queen cell and it's sitting in a pool of what we call royal jelly. Now royal jelly is a very important substance that's fed to all developing bees, but it's particularly fed to queen bees. I'll just digress for a minute. Royal jelly is often harvested and put into so-called natural cosmetics like face creams and soaps and that sort of thing. And I really would discourage you from buying that type of product. Unfortunately, the royal jelly has to be harvested, so the bees have to be forced to produce large quantities of queen cells, and then it's scooped out and put into the actual cosmetics. And it's really not a very good way of keeping bees, getting them to raise royal jelly all the time. So we would never sell royal jelly, and I really do feel that we shouldn't be encouraging the trade in this. But anyway, I digress. They put the egg or the young larva into the cell, and they're now feeding it exclusively with royal jelly. If it were a normal bee, they'd feed it for roughly two to three days on royal jelly and then roughly another two to three days on what we call bee bread. But the queen, she only gets fed on royal jelly. And that activates different genes in the genome and therefore produces a queen rather than a normal worker bee. So it's all very important as to what the bee is fed at the developing stage of her lifetime and that determines whether she's going to become a queen or whether she will become a normal worker bee. Once they've fed the young larva for five days, they'll then seal the cell in the same way that they would seal a normal cell, except for the fact the final cell looks like, well, I think it's a peanut. That's the best description I can give you. And it hangs down from the frame. Now, some people say if the cells are around the edge of the frame, 
then the bees are looking to actually swarm and if the cells are in the middle of the frame they're looking to replace the old queen or what we call supersede. Unfortunately in 30 years of beekeeping I've never found bees that have read this book and quite often you'll find queen cells around the outside and the inside so I really don't put much store by that but you'll hear it said. They make more than one queen cell and sometimes they'll make a lot more. I've had 17 or 18 produced naturally in a beehive when they've been looking to supersede a queen. But it's the first one out that wins. When she's ready to hatch, and that is 16 days after the egg has actually been laid, she'll cut a trap door in the bottom of the cell and she'll drop out. And it really is first one out's the winner. <clears throat> she will go round and she'll immediately kill any of her sisters. She'll sting them through the cell wall. And a queen bee can sting many times, unlike a normal bee, worker bee, who can only actually sting once. Once she's been round and dispatched all of her sisters, she can think about beginning her life as a queen bee. At this point, the queen bee is a virgin. She's got to go and get mated. And she's only got a three week window in which to get mated. So she'll fly out and she'll do her orientation flights initially, looking for what we call drone congregation areas, which is where all the male bees gather. And over that three week period, she'll mate with somewhere between 12 and 15 males. And that's the only time in her whole life that she'll fly unless the colony is going to swarm. Once she's been mated, she'll go back to the hive and then she's an egg laying machine. She's going to be laying between 1,500 and 2,000 eggs a day for the rest of her life. And that's her purpose. She doesn't rule the hive, she doesn't make decisions. There is no ruler within the hive and the queen is really a misnomer. She's the mother of all the bees, but definitely not a ruler. So here we have it. The queen bee, she's back at the hive, she's there, she's laying away, and she'll carry on laying for, in the old days, up to five years. And that's why we mark our queen bees with a colour code. And the code that we use is white, yellow, red, green, blue. Will you raise good bees? And we just put a little blob of coloured paint on the back of her head, so that we can identify that she really is the queen that we started with and how old she is. And that's very important in hive management. And if you want to know why, look at our other videos and we'll be making some more videos on queen rearing later on in the season. There you have it then, how to make a queen. It's nothing to do with appointing one of the bees. A queen is made and she is actually born as a queen bee. Doesn't rule the hive, but she is the mother of all bees and she is critical to the hive. And one of the things we've got to do as a good beekeeper is our regular inspections to make sure we've got a queen. Because if the bees have decided to replace their queen, you can see how vulnerable they are until that queen gets mated. We get two or three weeks of bad weather, or she gets eaten by a bird on one of her mating flights, and that's the end of her. But more importantly, that's the end of the colony, because they don't have any eggs then to make another queen. So as good beekeepers, please make sure you're inspecting your hives every seven to 10 days during the season. If you think you haven't got a queen, make sure you take advice because if everything goes horribly wrong, you can always buy in a new queen and save the hive. And saving the hive is really important. A beehive with no queen is no beehive at all. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please give us a thumbs up, maybe share the video and even subscribe. And We'll be making more videos very shortly on the channel. Until then, I'm going to finish off enjoying my ginger cake and my cup of tea and wish you happy beekeeping and enjoy your beekeeping and your bees. Thanks for watching. <laughs>